Hello to all. In this video, we will learn about continuity. A function that can be graphed throughout its domain with one continuous motion of the pen, that is, without lifting your pen, is an example of a continuous function. Below, there are two different graphs. The first graph classified as a continuous graph and the second one classified as discontinuous graph. In order to check our continuity, there are three different types of tests that need to be done. The first one, we have to check whether our function is very well defined. The second test, we must check whether our limit exists. And the third test, we have to check whether our limit value and our defined value are at the same place. In other words, our final answer from the first test must be equal to our final answer in the second test. There are a few types of discontinuous graph or function. Below are some of the examples. For the first graph, we consider this as a discontinuous graph because our function is not well defined here. So from here, we can detect that this is a discontinuous function. The second one, we still classify this as a discontinuous function because our defined value and our limit value lies at a different place. Even though it seems like the graph is continuous, but because the defined value lies at a different place, we still classify this as a discontinuous graph. The third graph classified also as a discontinuous because our limit does not exist here. Because basically, our limit from the left side are different from limit from left side. And last one, we classify this as discontinuous graph because basically A here is an asymptote. Whenever you have an asymptote in your graph, this is basically a discontinuous function. So from the graph, we have to determine whether the function is dis is continuous or discontinuous at the following value of x. Part A, we have x equal to negative 3. So, focus on negative 3. Obviously, you can detect that your graph stop at negative 3 at a different place. Therefore, our limit value and our defined value lies at a different value. So, we can conclude this as a discontinuous. So, our conclusion here would be fx is discontinuous at x equal to negative 3. Next one, part b, we have x equal to negative 1. So, focus at x equal to negative 1. As you can detect, your graph is continuous there and your limit value and your defined value lies at the same place. So here we can conclude that basically our fx is continuous at x equal to negative 1. Moving on, part c, we have x equal to 2. It seems like our graph is continuous there, but our defined value and our limit value lies at a different place. So we can conclude that here basically our fx is discontinuous. Next one, part D, we have x equal to 4. And from your graph, obviously you can detect that x equal to 4 is basically a vertical asymptote. So our conclusion would be fx is discontinuous at x equal to 4. I use a short note here, but basically during examination, please use a full sentence. Next one, part E, we have x equal to 6. So focus on your graph. We have a perfect quadratic graph here. Obviously, our conclusion will be fx is continuous at x equal to 6. 
and last one we have x equal to negative 5 so there's nothing wrong here if we check from the right side and our defined value lies at the same place but then our limit does not exist if we check from our left side because basically we don't have any other graph to check on our left side so we can conclude that our fx is discontinuous at x equal to negative 5. Proceed to example 15. Now here we have a piecewise function different from before. Before we have a graph that we can refer to but now we don't have any other graph but only a piecewise function. So in order to avoid any confusion, first step you can draw a number line as a guideline to refer which function are from the left side and which function are from the right side. So first one we have from negative 5 up to 1. Negative 5 if excluded and 1 is included. And our function here would be 3x. Second one is from 1 up to 6. 1 is excluded and 6 is included. So our function here would be 3. And last one from 6 up to 10. Our function here will be x squared minus 3. So we have to determine whether your function is continuous at part a x equal to 1. So in order to check whether our x value is continuous or discontinuous, we have to perform the continuity test. As before, we already learned that there are three different type of tests that we need to be done. So, our first test would be define value. So, first one, we have to check f of 1. f of 1, in this case, we check. So, since 1 is included in 3x, so our function will be 3x. So, 3 times with 1, so our value will be 3 here. So, this is a defined value. As long as you get a constant, as your final answer, we classified this as a defined function. Okay, second test is we have to find our limit. So, in order to check the limit, we must perform one-sided limit test. So, x approaches 1 from left. So, 1 from the back, our function is 3x. So, it will be 3 times 1. So, here your answer is 3. And then we have to check 1 from our right side. So 1 from the front, your function is 3. So your final answer is also 3. Since we get the same answer from the left and the right side, we can conclude that limit x approaches 1 of fx would be equal to 3. So our limit here is basically exists. And last one for the third test. We have to check whether our answer from the first test and our answer from the second test are the same. And in this case, yes, our defined value and our limit is basically equal to 3. Because, because we already satisfy all three tests, we can conclude that basically fx is continuous. At x equal to 1. Moving on, part B, we have to check at x equal to 6. Same as before, we must do all three tests. So, first test would be f6. We have to check whether this is a defined value or not. So, 6, we have two different values. We must choose the included function. So, in this case, this would be equal to so this is also a defined value. For the second test, we must find the limit. So limit of x approaches 6 from the left side. So 6 from the back will be 3. Carefully, you must choose a correct function here. So this is equal to 3. Now, limit of x approaches 6 from the right. So 6 at the front will be x squared minus 3. And this will be equal to 36 minus 3 and your final answer will be 33. 
Now, we have a different value from the left and from the right side. So, our conclusion would be limit of x approaches 6 of fx is basically does not exist. Since we already failed the second test, there's no point to check our third test. So, we straight away can conclude that basically fx is discontinuous at x equal to 6. Moving on, part C, we have to check whether f is continuous at x equal to negative 5. So, here, from our first test, f of negative 5. So, if we focus at negative 5 here, negative 5 does not have any defined function. So, from here, straight away, we can conclude that f of negative 5 is undefined. Since we already failed our first test, we can straight away conclude that fx is discontinuous at x equal to negative 5. Last one, part D, we have x equal to 10. So, straight for our... So, check our first test, f10. So, focus at 10. Now, here we have a defined function. In this case, is x squared minus 3. So, 10 squared minus 3. Our value will be 97. So, this is a defined value. Moving on. Our second test, we have to find the limit. So, limit of x approaches 10 from right. In this case, if we check from our number line, 10 from right side or at the front, we don't have any defined function. So, straight away, we can conclude here our limit for x approaches 10 from the right is basically does not exist. Here, once again, we fail the second test. So, straight away, we can conclude that fx is discontinuous. At x equal to 10. Moving on, next one. Given our fx is x, if x does not equal to 0, and 1 if x is equal to 0. So we have to check whether fx is continuous at x equal to 0. First step, draw your number line in order to avoid any confusion. So now there's a tricky part here. So basically, we will have exactly 1 when x is equal to 0. So there's only one dotted point there. Use black dot since it is included. And then for excluded part, means any other value except 1, our function will be x. So to check whether this is a continuous or discontinuous, so we must perform the continuity test. So first test, we have to find F0. So for F0, we must choose a defined function here. In this case, will be 1. So we pass our first test. We get a defined value here. Next, for our second test, we must find our limit. So, limit of x approaches 0 from left. So, focus on your number line, 0 from the back. Your function would be x. So, your answer would be 0. Next, limit of x approaches 0 from the right side. So, 0 at the front. Your function is still x. So, this is still a 0. Since we get the same answer from the left and from the right side, we can conclude that limit of x approaches 0 of fx is equal to 0. So, we pass the second test since we get a limit here. But then, on our third test, we must check whether our answer from the first test and answer from the second test are the same. And in this case, one we get a from the first test, we get 1, but from the second test, we get 0. So, it does not equal. We can conclude straight away from here. Basically, F0 does not equal to your limit of x approaches 0 fx. 
then your final conclusion will be fx is discontinuous at x equal to 0.